Hey guys, back with a new video. Uh, yeah, okay, immediately you're probably noticing uh, maybe a jump in uh, video quality. Uh, I got a new phone actually, and I'm able to record videos with it because uh, my previous phone was really, really shitty. And up until now, I've been using a webcam on my uh, MacBook, and it's this is an it's like a really old MacBook Pro, so the the webcam is really shitty. Uh, and I've gotten comments on audio quality for uh, for, qu for quite a while, and it, it was always something I wanted to change. Like I wanted to either get an, uh, a video camera or a new phone. Uh, so I, I got like a, a new iPhone, and uh, this is going to be the first video using it. So already, uh, that's uh, that's kind of a big change. And I'm using the same location now. I, I can probably change my filming location like I might film uh, my late next videos in front of my TV or something I, I don't know I'm probably gonna try a bunch of different locations to see what works the best uh, <laughs> it's it's gonna be yeah I'm gonna be doing some experimenting but uh, for now this is just gonna be kind of like the first video to test what the actual video quality is gonna look like uh, but I'm still gonna have some gameplay footage of the game I'm talking about because this is a review so let's uh, get right into the review uh, it's probably going to be a shorter review. Uh, Infamous Second Son for the PS4. And this is like the last PS4 game I have other than Final Fantasy X-2 that I, I need to play. Uh, and I haven't played the previous Infamous games. I've only played the demo of the first one. So I'm not actually sure of the ways that this game connects in terms of story. But uh, I feel like I probably enjoyed this game more because I didn't play the previous ones. Because the gameplay was kind of different for me. Uh, I wasn't used to it. So I really enjoyed my time with this game, actually. Uh, I, I think it's actually a pretty damn good game. It's got its issues, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about those. But uh, overall, I enjoyed it. It was a nice, brief, fun experience. And it, uh, for an open-world game, it doesn't suffer a lot of... Um, it doesn't suffer from a lot of the problems that I find that the genre tends to have. But uh, we'll, we'll talk about story first. And... This is this is where the game I, I think is a little problematic. Uh, I think it's the story is easily the game's low point. Uh, basically, you, your character is Delson Rose. I th I think his last name was, but uh, uh, the game takes place in Seattle. Although in the beginning, you're kind of at, on the outskirts of Seattle, and uh, your your character Delson, he's kind of like this uh, troublemaker kind of character. I, I don't know how old he is. He's probably in his in his twenties, but he likes to like do like stencil art, spray painting all over the place, and and cause trouble. And he's the type of character where it's like. I feel like this is one of those characters that, uh, it, like, a bunch of like forty-year-olds were just in a, sitting in a room and thinking, "What is cool? What is considered cool nowadays?" And then they just anything that came to their to, to their minds, they just uh, you know had made this character with. So he's really irritating, and I, and he's lame. Uh, his dialogue is really terrible, uh, and it's it's just. It's it's awkward, and I, I really do not care for the main character in this game. But anyways, he's your character, the play the player character. Uh, your brother Reggie is a sheriff, and you're uh, you're a part of this tribe, this Akamish tribe, I guess. I, though I, I'm pretty no no, I don't think you were adopted or anything, but like that. But uh, basically, the in in this game's world, there's like this DUP, which is like this force that tries to find the remaining conduits. Uh, there's not too many conduits, but conduits are these people that have gotten powers uh, and they're considered dangerous and they're ca called bioterrorists in this game. And basically in the beginning of the game there's like this transport, like this bus that's transporting three bioterrorist prisoners and uh, it, it kind of crashes in your area and you, you kind of go and try to rescue uh, some of the survivors, and you meet someone that ends up giving you uh, a conduit power, the power of smoke. So Delson gets the smoke ability, uh, and basically the main villain uh, finds your character. Her name's Augustine. She's like kind of like the leader of the DUP forces, and she wants to cr try and get information of like where did these prisoners go, and she kind of uh, she has the power of concrete because she's a, a conduit herself. And she basically uh, injures a lot of the tribe with these con with their concrete powers uh, to try to get information from them, and obviously they don't talk. And uh, Delson, of course, is angry with this, so he goes to Seattle to try to find Augustine to get her power because uh, getting concrete 
yeah. the, getting the concrete power from her apparently will save uh, this this tribe, and they're they're slowly dying. Uh, why Augustine didn't just outright kill them, I have no idea. <laughs> um, and the the villain is kind of interesting, but not. I don't know. I, I it takes a while to really learn what her motivations are, uh, and I don't know. It, it's she's. I'm kind of conflicted on, on on her, but she's probably one of the better characters in the game. Uh, you also meet some other conduits along the way. Uh, this this one girl named what was her name? I forget her name, but she was really annoying too. Uh, she's basically I don't know. She was just irritating. Um, and then this like the kind of, this kind of like nerdy guy, which is like just the stereotypical nerd, uh, and it, he was kind of irritating too, just because of how stereo stereotypical he was. Like the characters are not great. The dialogue is really cheesy, uh, and it's it. This game made me cringe so many times as I was going through it. Like it, it was insane, and the story is just not that interesting. Uh, and there's like kind of a, a morality system here where you can use your powers for good and evil. There'll be different parts of the story where you choose like an evil or good action. And at first it seemed like the, the dialogue and story might change depending on the decisions you make. But like the changes are extremely minor. And I looked online because I played like an evil playthrough. And the, the differences are so minor it's laughable. And it's just like... It's either like these kind of almost over the top evil actions that, uh, or, or like these really good actions. It's so black and white. There's no gray area to this morality system. And it coming off of Knights of the Old Republic 2, it is so laughable, uh, like what it's like in this game. It, it's, it's, <laughs> Uh, like, I don't know, it, it's, the, this whole morality system is, is pretty flawed in this game, too. Uh, and, like, yeah, it just, it doesn't change the story, like, pretty much at all. Um, the only thing I liked with the morality system is some of the powers you get are a little different. They don't really make sense, uh, the kind of powers you get, uh, depending on if you go a good or evil path. But I did at least like that if you were... Uh, depending on what path you chose, you were going to get a, a few different abilities. But even then, it's not it's not drastic or anything like that. But uh, yeah, the story you're 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 going to Seattle to, to try to find Augustine and you know take her out, and you meet some new characters along the way. Uh, it, it's 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 not a good story. It's just not. It, it's I, I'm curious what like the previous Infamous games were like if they were as bad as this one, but. I, I wasn't playing this game for the story, and unfortunately, there's a lot of cutscenes, and you can't skip them. I was planning on doing a second playthrough, because the game was enjoyable enough, and I wanted to see some of the more uh, good uh, power, uh, good actions and good powers that you'd get, but you can't skip cutscenes. So you, there's like this really long tutorial s section, and it takes a while till you, you're able to visit Seattle proper and really get into the meat of the game. It's like this hour-long section. I got like 30 minutes through it, and I was like, nah, I'm not playing this game again. Uh, no, no thanks. But um, I did still enjoy the first playthrough, so we'll get to what I enjoyed about this game, and that's the gameplay. Uh, it's it's an open-world game once you finally do visit Seattle, and uh, let's immediately talk about why I feel like this game doesn't have the bloat that a lot of open world games like a lot of assassin's creed games there's so much shit on the map for you to do there's like the flags you gotta find there's all this like meaningless shit uh, at least in my opinion and in this game a lot of the side activities are kind of boring and uh they don't really add a whole lot they don't even give you new abilities really like we'll talk about some of the mini games you'll find across the map there's the tagging mini game which uh, we'll talk about the tagging mini game. This game is very gimmicky because it was still kind of one of the earlier PS4 games. There's a lot of touchpad use and, and a lot of like control, like shaking your controller, like you shake your controller like a spray uh, a spray can, uh, and then you kind of like hold R2 to spray and then kind of like move your controller around to to you know tag these these walls. It's really gimmicky and it's not that fun, but there's that there's that kind of activity you can do. You can there, there's some cool ones. There's these hidden camera ones where you have to like, you get to see where this hidden camera is, and it will like kind of scope out this area, and then you kind of have to like pay attention to where it's like looking, and then you have to you have like this little tiny area 
Uh, and you'll have to kind of like look really closely and see if you can find where the hidden camera is and then shoot it out. That is actually kind of interesting. It can be a challenge sometimes to spot this camera because they're so tiny. Uh, so you have that activity. There's these secret agent activities, which I thought were kind of neat, where you'll get a picture of this secret uh, conduit agent, uh, and uh, you'll have to you'll have like this small little area. You have to like scope out this this person from all these NPCs, uh, and they'll run away if they spot you, or or you kind of look at them long enough without actually like noticing that it's the secret agent you're looking for. Uh, and once you've found them, that you might a chase sequence might uh, happen where you got to chase them down and, and and kill them. So that mini game I thought was kind of interesting as well. Uh, that it, that was kind of fun. You also have these points where if you complete enough activities in an area, because the the city is kind of divided into sections, then you'll get like a, a takedown mission. I, I think that I think they're called a takedown mission, where basically uh, the DUP will send all these forces after you. You take out their forces, and then you'll you'll complete the showdown. Showdown. That's what it's called. And then that district will be, like, the, the patrols will be lessened. And then if you finish off the rest of the activities in that district, then the DUP will be completely driven out of the area. And this is kind of addictive, doing all these side activities throughout these districts and kind of clearing out the DUP. And it doesn't take very long. Not only does it not take very long, but every single activity is clearly shown on your map. And you can easily set a waypoint so you know exactly where you're going to be going to get to these activities. And there's not an overwhelming amount of them. Uh, you feel like you can get this done fairly quickly. And I did. I 100%ed this game. I, I did every single activity there was to do. And it was nice. It was nice to play this open world game that felt kind of focused and didn't have a, a lot of the bloat that a lot of others do. So I, I kind of appreciated it. Uh, and the game is quite short too. The main story missions aren't going to take you that long to get through. It's maybe like a 12 to 15 hour game, but I actually liked it. I liked how short it was. Uh, it was it was just nice. Uh, now, if I paid full price for this game, I might have maybe been a little disappointed. But I paid 15 bucks for for this game, and for 15 bucks, it was quite nice. Uh, there's other activities though you can do. Uh, I guess the main one is flying, finding blast cores. And there are, there are these little, like, patrolling DUP drones that you have to kind of kill, and they'll drop these shards where you kind of absorb them. And uh, the shards are what give you your new abilities. And I guess we'll talk about the ability system. You start off with the smoke ability, where uh, your controls kind of change depending on what ability you've got on at the, at, at the, at the moment. And you have, like, uh, the, the smoke ability, you can shoot, like, missiles. Uh, you have, like, normal smoke shots, with your, which are kind of your bullets. Uh, you have like traversal kind of abilities with each kind of conduit ability you get because there's not only smoke. There's also neon, uh, video, and then uh, a, a later ability that I don't really want to spoil. Um, so like the neon ability, for instance, is really cool where you'll, if you hold circle, you'll do like this really fast run and you can run up buildings. So traversal is actually really fun in this game. Now smoke is not as good because you just kind of dash. It's kind of like a dash ability. You can kind of dash through vents uh, and kind of get scale up buildings quickly that way. Uh, so each ability has their own kind of traversal mechanics and their own kind of abilities. And the blast cores uh, upgrade these different abilities and also get new you get new abilities depending on how many blast cores you have. So. The exploration of the city is incentivized in that way. I was over, always looking for new blast cores. But uh, all the other activities don't really get you anything. All they do is kind of allow you to do these showdowns so you can kind of clear out the the, the DUP from the city so you're not running into them uh, so, often, so, so often. But uh, yeah, the, the abilities are all really fun to use. And it's... There, you've got kind of like ammo for your abilities. You have to actually absorb uh, like smoke, neon, or video from the environment. So if you need more smoke ability, uh, you're going to have to find like a chimney or something like that with smoke coming out of it or a destroyed car. Uh, so you'll, And then you'll just uh, touch the touchpad button. You'll absorb smoke from the, uh, from the, from the car. So... It, it can be a bit annoying with the smoke ability because I found chimneys were kind of annoying to find. But at the same time, your map will clearly show you where these uh, spawn points are for these uh, absorb points. And they're color-coded, too, for, like, neon video and uh, smoke, which is very nice. Now, unfortunately, you can't switch uh, your powers at will once you have more than one. 
So if you have smoke equipped on at the moment and you want uh, video, for instance, uh, to easily scale buildings or you know have your like flight ability of sorts, you're gonna have to find a, a video point and absorb that, and then you'll have the video power equipped. I, I wish there was a, a way to, to change them more easily. Like, I don't know. I, I, I think it is kind of annoying that way. But at the same time, it's not a big deal. It wasn't a deal breaker for me because you can, again, they're easily, they're on the map. So you can know where these absorb points are. But other than these side activities, you've got the main story missions that you're going at. And, you know, of course, watching cutscenes. And, and they're, they're, the main story missions are, are pretty fun. Uh, and again, using your abilities is, is just fun. Like the combat feels good, the aiming it feels good, uh, and the, the sense of speed is great too. Uh, and the sense of verticality with these environments and these buildings is, is fantastic as well. Um, so yeah, I, I do feel the enemies are a bit bullet spongy, uh, especially on like the normal difficulty. Uh, I don't even want to imagine like the hard difficulty. So that that was a bit of, a, of an annoyance. Uh, and some of these points where you have to kind of like there's like wave based combat where you have to de like defeat waves of enemies uh, to kind of uh, like um, destroy these. Not they're not core relays. I don't know. They're like these objective type things you have to destroy. Uh, you have to kill a lot of enemies. They can they can go on for quite a while and get uh, get a little repetitive, but it, it's it, it's still like the game plays pretty pretty well and, it, and it's fun. And most importantly, it's a fun game to play. Uh, there's a few boss fights that you'll find throughout the story. Uh, there's one boss fight though that I hated. Uh, it was the the angel type boss where you've got lava all, uh, all around and you're kind of like jumping between these platforms. And this boss takes forever. It just it's like a, this huge damage sponge and you're you're constantly like jumping all over these platforms and trying to avoid lava and there's all this all this shit being sh shot at you. It's 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 irritating. Like I hated that boss so much. But there are some bosses that I really loved. Uh, the final boss I thought was actually really cool. Now, it's it's a, it's a pretty simple boss. You're just kind of shooting at it and dodging at it, its its attacks, but the way it animates and how like flashy this battle was and all like these particle effects all over the place. It was really impressive. Uh, so yeah, I, I guess I've talked about uh, enough about the gameplay. So we'll talk about the visuals now because holy shit, this game looks amazing. Like, it kind of blew me away. It's honestly probably the best-looking game I've played. Now, I haven't played a lot of games. Like, I haven't played The Order, which apparently looks amazing. But this this game is a stunning game. Uh, not only does it run at a stable frame rate, and I, at first I thought it was 60 FPS, and I don't know if it is, but I, th I think it is. I think it is actually 30 FPS, or at least... Uh, sometimes it feels like it go goes up to like 45 or something like that, but it runs really well. Like I didn't notice the frame rate uh, go down at all, even with like the really crazy abilities. Like you get these really overpowered abilities if you get like a kill streak, where if you press up on the D-pad, you're, you're you'll do like this crazy power that destroys a bunch of enemies uh, around you. Like these are these really flashy uh, particle effects driven. Like, like the, the it's like crazy how much shit is going on on screen when you use one of these powers, and the the frame rate doesn't hitch whatsoever. It's it's crazy, but uh yeah, like the animations in this game are incredible. Like they're like the the character models are fantastic too. The faces look good. The mouth syncing is a little weird sometimes. The way mouths move. But other than that, like the characters look fantastic. The way they animate is so lifelike. Uh, and like I said before, this final boss was really impressive to watch and to play. That I was just, I was almost in awe. Uh, the city of Seattle looks fantastic. All like the buildings look amazing. Like I, like there's nothing to complain about with the visuals here. Like it's it's an amazing looking game, uh, and it's probably why the game is so short and there's not much to do because like they really focused on on the graphics uh, of this game, but. Uh, yeah, really, really impressive. Uh, really impressive stuff. Uh, audio, it's okay. The voice acting is good, uh, but like with the dialogue being so cheesy, uh, you know, it's. Eh. Uh, Troy Baker plays the main character, which was so obvious. It's such a Troy Baker performance, but uh, the voice acting is solid enough. The music is pretty. I don't know. It's fairly dynamic for like the situations you you find yourself in, but it's pretty boring. It's it's kind of that typical Western game music that just 
is so like ugh, it just doesn't do anything for me the music in this game there is a there is a few cool songs here and there like one of the first songs that plays like in the beginning of the game during this se- like running kind of platforming sequence was, was pretty cool but uh, there's some like electronic driven tracks uh, some drum and bass type tracks it's it's it, it, it's a pretty boring soundtrack overall. I mean, I guess it fits the game, but I, I wasn't impressed with it whatsoever. And there's only like a couple songs that really stuck with me. But uh, yeah, audio overall is good. Like the sound effects are, are really great uh, as well. And and combined with like all the particle and, and visual effects, it's just it's like the audio visual presentation in this game is just top notch. Really, uh, the game controls quite well too. Uh, like I said before, I had a, it, has, it has a great sense of speed uh, that I really appreciated, and it's just it's just a fun game to play. But um, yeah, that's it. Uh, not too much to say. This else to say. This review has gone on longer than I expected. Uh, there'll be some more. I'll put up some gameplay footage so you can see what it's like. But uh, yeah, I, I'd be interested. To, to let me know what the differences are between the other two infamous games because uh, I haven't played those. But uh, yeah, this game you can get for really cheap now. I got it for 15 bucks, but in the U.S. you can probably get it for like 5 to 10 Though, it seems like a game that might be a PS Plus game at some point, so maybe you want to hold off for that. But uh, it's definitely worthwhile, I think. I, I think it's worth owning on the PS4, and I, I had a good time with it, even though it's you know it's a fairly brief experience. But uh, yeah, uh, it, it's, it's a good game. Uh, not perfect, but... Uh, you know, it, it, the gameplay's fun enough to, to carry you through it, despite the uh, really, really bad story and, and dialogue. But uh, that's it, guys. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.